The top stories tonight in Y News. The Commission on Appointments has bypassed the ad interim appointments of five officials, including the chiefs of the Comelec Civil Service Commission and the Commission on Audit. Interior Undersecretary Jonathan Malaya says social media giant Facebook appears as an accessory to a crime for not blocking isabong or online cockfighting in its platform. Private schools in the Philippines want to continue with a combination of online and in-person classes in the coming school year. The Philippine Coast Guard has filed criminal charges against four officers of MV Happy Hero, the cargo vessel that collided with a Filipino fishing boat in Agutaya, Palawan. Good evening, Philippines and the world. Today is Wednesday, June 1, 2022. Join us in the next hour as we deliver today's top stories around the Philippines and in other parts of the world. I am William Theo. We are also seen in 1,935 satellite monitoring centers nationwide and via live streaming worldwide through the UNTV News and Rescue social media accounts. First in the news, the five appointees of President Rodrigo Duterte failed to get the nod of the Commission on Appointments after they were bypassed by its panel. Harleen Delgado will tell us why. For the third and last time, the Committee on Constitutional Commissions and Offices of the Commission on Appointments, or CA, failed to deliberate the ad interim appointments of five officials of the Duterte administration. This was after Senator Cynthia Villar, who chairs the committee, announced the absence of a quorum this morning on the last session day of the 18th Congress. This means the five appointees of President Rodrigo Duterte in three commissions are bypassed. They are Commission on Audit Chairperson Rizalina Hustol, Civil Service Commission Chairperson Carlo Nograles, Commission on Elections Chairperson Saidamen Pangarungan, and Commissioners George Garcia and Amy Torrefranca Neri. Villar maintains they followed all the rules in the commission. Up to the last minute, kala namin may forum, na wala ang forum. <laughs> I have to follow the law. Baka ako naman ang idemanda. <laughs> Senate Majority Leader Juan Miguel Migzubiri reiterated the request from the incoming administration to give President-elect Bongbong Marcos the free hand to appoint the officials under his term. Hindi naman sila will never check. Ang request lang ng bagong administration is give them the opportunity to be the one to to uh, appoint them. Yun lang naman, and I think it's a good, it's courtesy to the new administration. It's a matter of principle. It's, it was not to do the anything else without politics. It's just a matter of principle. For one of the bypassed appointees, Kamala Commissioner Garcia says he respects the decision of the CA and has no regrets with his short stint in the poll body. The mga sacrificio, uh, it's really worth it. All the sacrifices are really worth it. Sa akin palagay po, walang dapat uh, ikalungkot, walang dapat na sabihin na, na panghihinayang at kung ako pa'y bibigyan ng pagkakataon na makapaglingkod muli, sampung beses ko pong pipiliin ang commission ng election. Incoming Press Secretary Attorney Trixie Cruz Angeles says no word yet if the bypassed officials will be reappointed in the Marcos administration. We have no information as to whether or not they will be reappointed. We are only appreciative of the gesture that uh, the president-elect's opinion or choices on the officials are taken into consideration. Harleen Delgado, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. President-elect Ferdinand Bongbong Marcos Jr. is eyeing the appointment of three allies of President Rodrigo Duterte under his administration. Nel Maribohok will tell us why. Incoming Press Secretary Attorney Trixie Cruz Angeles has confirmed that Sagi Party List Representative Rodante Marcoleta, newspaper columnist Rigoberto Tiglao, and former DPWH Yusek Karin Jimeno are being considered to be part of the incoming Marcos administration. But for now, according to Angeles, there are no decisions yet on said appointments. 
Well, uh, we can confirm that those names are being talked about, but there are no decisions being made yet as of now. Marcoleta's name is being floated as the next energy secretary, while Jimeno and Tiglao are supposedly the choices for the next presidential spokesperson. In addition, Angeles said there are a lot of applicants for a cabinet position, including the post for agriculture secretary, so the decisions cannot be made quickly. Also, marami po kasi kinoconsider na applications. Simula po nang na-announce ang kanyang pagkapanalo, marami po ang nagpipresenta at nagsusumite ng kanilang mga aplikasyon. So, to be fair, kailangan daanan, pasadahan po lahat yun at yun po ang nakakatagal sa selection. According to President-elect Ferdinand Bongbong Marcos Jr., he needs to choose carefully those who will be part of his administration. Hindi ito madali dahil kailangan maging masusi ang ating pagkilatis at lalong hindi naman dapat itong minamadali. Nel Maribuhok, UNTV News and Rescue, we serve the people, we give glory to God. Incoming Department of Social Welfare and Development Secretary Erwin Tulfo sets key reforms within his post, his new post, including giving the Pantawid Pamilyang Pilipino Programs or 4 Peace conditional cash assistance in a lump sum. He also plans to update the list of 4 Peace beneficiaries in the country. Rosa Dicos will tell us why. Broadcast journalist and incoming DSWD Secretary Erwin Tulfo has named his two undersecretaries of the department once he formally assumes his office. These are former journalist Sally Navarro as undersecretary for the office of the secretary and Jericho Javier as undersecretary for operations. Tulfo said the two are highly experienced with relief operations. He also mentioned about his intentions not to bring many people in the social welfare department. So dalawa lang yung kasama ko siguro pagkatapos yung kanilang mga secretary, yung kanilang mga staff. Pero as much as possible, uh, it should, I will limit bringing in uh, so many people uh, kasi I want to promote people from within. The incoming DSWD chief also eyes distributing the cash assistance in lump sums. This way, beneficiaries will be able to start their own business instead of just using up the assistance amounting to 1,200 pesos a month. However, this needs a lot of study before being implemented. Pag-aaralan talaga mabuti ito na, why don't we just do it like isang lump sum? Okay, yung two years niya, ibigay na lump sum yan para makapagpatayo siya ng business. Ah, small business, sari-sari store, magtinda siya dyan ng barbecue o gumawa ng mga yes. ikang basahan para um. in the long run, doon niya kunin everyday yung kanyang pangka pangkain sa mga tinda-tindahan niya. Meanwhile, to ensure that government funds are not wasted and only those deserving fellow Filipinos are receiving the cash aid, Tulfo eyes cleansing the list of beneficiaries of various social welfare programs and projects. This include Pantawid Pamilya Pilipino Program or 4 Peace, Social Pension for Indigent Senior Citizens, Unconditional Cash Transfer Program, among others. What he wants uh, me is to clean the record, review the records, the list of DSWD, not only sa 4 Peace, but kat katulad niyan yung sa mga senior citizens and PWDs, yung mga ikang, mga tupad uh, program. I have to... Uh, Clean it, review it. Next Monday, June 6, the transition teams of Tulfo and outgoing Social Welfare Secretary Rolando Bautista are scheduled to meet up. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. Meanwhile, Senate Majority Leader Juan Miguel Zubiri is likely to serve as the Senate President of the next Congress after his closest rival, Senator Cynthia Villar, conceded in the race. Harleen Delgado gives us the details. Senator Cynthia Villar confirmed today that she will no longer vie for the Senate presidency in the 19th Congress. In an ambush interview with reporters, the lawmaker says she is no longer interested in the upper chamber's highest post, even with a term-sharing agreement. She also confirmed that she will support the bit of Senate Majority Leader Mig Zubiri instead. Ma'am, kahit 
term sharing, wala na pong chance. Ayoko na. I want a simple life. <laughs> Zubiri for his part says his group will form a super majority in the next Congress together with Villar's group. The Senate leader also revealed the names of who will lead some of the Senate committees. Returning Senator Antica Representative Loren Legarda is poised to be the next Senate President pro tempore, while Senator Joel Villanueva is set to serve as the next Senate Majority Leader. Re-electionist Senator Winga Chalian will head the Committee on Ways and Means, while Senator Sani Angara will remain as the chairperson of the Committee on Finance. The incoming neophyte senators will also head several Senate panels. Senator-elect Robin Padilla is poised to head the Committee on Constitutional Amendments, while Senator-elect Rafi Tulfo will be the chairperson of the Committee on Energy. Other committee chairpersonships are still being ironed out, according to Zubiri. Meanwhile, the forming of the minority bloc is also on the works. Senator Risa Honteveros, the lone opposition senator who won in the election, says they are eyeing at least three members in the minority group. Tuloy-tuloy ang aming pag-uusap at tuloy-tuloy din po ang uh, pag-reach out sa iba pang mga posibleng miyembro ng minorya habang syempre abala ang mayorya sa pagbubuo naman ng kanilang hanay para sa papasok na kongreso. On the minority leadership, Hontevero says she and Senator Coco Pimentel have agreed to focus first on shaping up the group's members before deliberating on who will lead the minority bloc. Harleen Delgado, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Private schools in the country want to continue with a combination of online and in-person classes despite calls to all schools to hold physical classes in the coming school year. Janice Ingente tells us why. The Coordinating Council of the Private Educational Association of the Philippines, or COCOPEA, agrees on the Department of Education's proposal to implement face-to-face -face classes in school year 2022-2023. However, according to Cocopea Managing Director Attorney Joseph Noel Estada, some private schools are still uncertain on whether to implement full physical classes in the next school year. This as some parents are still hesitating to allow their children to attend physical classes. That is why Estrada said hybrid classes or the combination of online and physical classes should continue in the next opening of class. For me, I think we should support you know, yung hybrid classes, yung pagpapatuloy ng combination ng online at face-to-face -face classes. Maganda rin talaga na merong options pa rin for the parents. Pero marami na rin, marami na rin ang excited na makabalik sa schools face-to-face. -face. The ACT Teachers Group agrees with DepEd's plan to return full physical classes alongside with the blended learning system. Meanwhile, some parents would prefer to send their children to their schools rather than online. Face to face na lang yun. Para mas managdag yung malatot-manatot sila sa ibang ano, may kakasalap mo ah. Kasi mahirap kasi yung mag-online, online nga sila. Kahit medyo tipid ka nga sa pabasa eh. Pero ano din, wala silang matututunan. Hindi mo naman sila matututukan kasi bilang nanay, mayroon pa rin mga gawa yung bahay. Kaya mas okay ako sa face to face. Maganda talaga, face to face. Parang titiya na magtungo doon sa mga studyante. Parang matuto sila, lalo. DepEd previously said that the department still considers implementing blended learning system in case IATF will allow 100% face-to-face classes in the next school year. Janice Inhente, UNTV, News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. In other news, President-elect Ferdinand Bongbong Marcos Jr., plans to provide internet connection to far-flung areas of the community. But the incoming Information and Communications Technology Secretary says anticipates challenges in its implementation. Asher Kadapan Jr. tells us why live. Uh, yes, uh, Asher, good evening. Go ahead. Good evening, Will. Funding of projects is a primary challenge in taking the lead as Secretary of the Department of Information and Communications Technology. 
information technology expert attorney Ivan John Uy explains this. As President-elect Ferdinand Bongbong Marcos Jr. asks to provide internet connectivity and technology, especially in remote areas across the country. This will help the economy grow more and the students learn efficiently, especially those under distance learning. Klaro po, no? Klaro ang marching orders ni President BBM. Uh, ito'y una, uh, yung connectivity. Uh, gusto niya na mabigyan ng magagandang uh, internet connection. Uh, Pinakaimportante yung mga nasa liblib na lugar na walang access sila sa teknolohiya. Uy specifies a solution for this vision. It includes the operation of Starlink Internet Services Philippines Incorporated, which utilizes the Low Earth Orbit Satellite Network. This will provide an immediate solution in the implementation of internet connectivity in far-flung areas. This is because it only uses small satellite dishes, cheaper than the big satellites being constructed by telecommunication companies. But the internet speed reaches up to 200 megabits per second. Ideal ito sa mga isla na kasi medyo malalayo ay eh, napakamalo kung magkoconnect tayo ng fiber optic or ng undersea cable there. But the incoming DIC secretary enumerates initial challenges in its implementation. Well, ang challenge po natin ngayon is uh, yung funding, no? To, to deploy itong mga technologies at um, connectivity na kailangan natin i-build up. Number two po, eh, yung, yung limitations ng salary standardization law. Dahil um, kukuha po tayo ng mga talents na kaya nito, eh, napakamahalo, mataas yung sweldo. Well, despite the challenges, the next administration targets to provide internet connectivity in remote areas within the first year of President-elect Marcus's leadership. Well, Yes, uh, thank you, Asher Kadapan Jr. reporting live from Quezon City. The Philippine Genome Center assures that the country has prepared for the possible entry and detection of the monkeypox virus. However, there are no test kits yet available in the Philippines to detect it. Aiko Miguel will give us the details live. Uh, yes, Aiko, good evening. Go ahead. Yes, William, good evening. When other countries recorded and confirmed monkeypox cases, the Philippine Genome Center immediately coordinated with the Health Department's Epidemiology Bureau to ensure the preparedness of sample sequencing in the Philippines. Gusto ko pong ipaalam sa inyo na we are ready, the kits are also ready. Kung uh, meron may padala sa atin ng mga samples, we are ready to do it. And of course, to share the results of the DOH epidemiology. William, according to PGC Executive Director Dr. Cynthia Saloma, it will be a more thorough process, but the country has means to do a metagenomic sequencing. It's a technique in DNA sequencing where we sequence everything, all the genome material that we can find, we sequence and bioinformatically, we subtract from a human genome, bacterial genome, and then we assemble the potential viral genome. So this is deep sequencing. DOH Technical Advisory Group and Infectious Diseases Expert Dr. Ed Salvania also said the country's healthcare system is ready to manage monkeypox disease cases. We do have those tools, um, you know, it's just that uh, we have to uh, put these policies into place. But whether or not you have the sequencing, if you have a suspected case, we know how to deal with those. William Dr. Salvania also explained RT-PCR is not required for incoming travelers who are fully vaccinated against COVID-19. But this doesn't mean the country will not be able to contain infectious diseases like COVID-19 and monkeypox. Health experts emphasize the four-door strategy is in place and authorities are still on alert. 
people naman kasi come in and you know we still have our thermal uh, scanners we still have a, a one health pass which asks you about symptoms and when people get in there of course they're still being uh, monitored uh, to make sure that they're not symptomatic if you do get sick after you arrive then you should get tested um, i think those systems are in place and that we should continue to use them uh, so that we can minimize the risk of any subsequent spikes here in the Philippines, there's no detected monkeypox case yet. However, as of May 13 to 26, there are now 257 confirmed monkeypox cases in 23 member states. While there are 120 suspected monkey ca mon monkeypox cases, the World Health Organization reports. And that is the latest live. Back to you, William. Yes, uh, thank you, Aiko Miguel, reporting live. The Department of Health and the Vaccine Expert Panel said there will be no rollout yet of the Moderna COVID-19 vaccines for children ages 6 to 11 years old. This is despite the Food and Drug Administration's approval on the emergency use authorization for Moderna COVID-19 vaccine for kids. Eileen Cerudo will explain why. Vaccine expert panel member and infectious disease expert Dr. Ron Jean Solante said the government is only waiting for the go signal and recommendation from the World Health Organization to make sure that the vaccines are safe to use. Since we are under a COVAX facility at itong mga bakuna na to ay under also donations from the COVAX facility which is also with the WHO, napaka-importante ng guidance ng WHO in the implementation of this uh, uh, vaccination particularly in the 6 to 11 years old. Dr. Solante also said vaccinating more children ages 6 to 11 years old will be beneficial, especially when the Department of Education eyes 100% face-to-face classes. He also explains that children, based on the previous COVID-19 surge, are as vulnerable as adults and therefore additional protection is necessary. The 6 to 11 years old, medyo uh, hindi pa hinug ang mga immune system nito. Madali talaga silang makapitan ng uh, COVID-19. And the fact na gusto na natin mag-face-to-face -face, no, sa mga paralan, then being vaccinated is another layer of protection na itong mga population na to mas uh, prepared for the face-to-face -face, uh, uh, education. Similar to Pfizer vaccines, Moderna will also have the same low dosage of 50 micrograms to be administered to children. Experts have already proven the safety and efficacy of the said dosage. Meanwhile, experts are also recommending expanding the vaccination of second booster doses for individuals with comorbidity. Dr. Solante explains there are enough vaccine supply to administer more second booster shots to the most vulnerable population in the country. Doon sa mga data, nakikita natin na pag meron kang comorbidity and you'll get the COVID infection, yung risk ng severe infection and even mortality is also high in this vulnerable population we call na meron mga comorbidities. So sana uh, ma-extend doon sa may mga comorbidities itong uh, second booster uh, na binibigyan na natin ngayon sa other vulnerable population. Eileen Cerudo, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. An official of the Department of the Interior and Local Government says, local, says social media giant Facebook appears to be tolerating illegal operations of online cockfighting or isabong in its platforms despite being banned in the Philippines. Lea Ilagan reports why. Department of Interior and Local Government or DILG spokesperson under Secretary Jonathan Malaya expressed dismay over the continued illegal online cap fighting operations on Facebook. DILG has sent a formal letter to Meta, the Facebook operator, informing them of the Facebook accounts and pages of East Sabong operators still operating. Malaya says they are saddened by the turn of events. Kami po ay nadidismaya, no? We are disappointed dahil uh, kung sila ay mag-shutdown ng ibang pages, mabilis. Uh, but in, in this case, it's as if they are tolerating illegal activity in the Philippines. Dumi kami ng tulong to follow up with Facebook 
why it's taking them more than a week to uh, shut down uh, pages that are engaged in illegal activity in the Philippines. So far, Facebook has not replied to the DILG's request. Malaya said the legal team of the DILG is studying its next action in the event Meta or Facebook refusal to comply. But being a business entity operating in the Philippines, he said Facebook is bound by Philippine laws which they should abide by. Uh, Pag-aaralan po siguro namin uh, kung ano ang mga susunod na hakbang, but let me just say that uh, as a business entity operating in the, in the Philippines, uh, Facebook has to abide by Philippine laws. Based on the record of the PNP anti-cybercrime group, they have monitored two Facebook accounts and six websites still operating illegal online cockfighting. It's like, ano eh, parang ganyan siya. Meron ngayon, mamaya wala, mm -hmm. tas iya up, ita down. So that's why every day, uh, meron kaming report. So mm -hmm. iba iba siya. Depende kung anong time mo siya kukunin because we do not really know. It's up to the administrators kung iya up nila or ita down. Authorities warn those who operate illegal isabong sites that they will face imprisonment. Leia Ilagan, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. In other news, the Philippine Coast Guard has filed criminal charges against four officers of MV Happy Hero, the cargo vessel that collided with a Filipino fishing boat in Agutaya, Palawan. Meanwhile, authorities ended the search and rescue operations for the seven missing fishermen. Dante Amento tells us why. Philippine Coast Guard Commandant Admiral Artemio Abu says they have finished the investigation on the collision incident between a Filipino fishing vessel and a foreign cargo ship off Palawan waters on Saturday. Admiral Abu added they found probable cause to indict some crew members of MV Happy Hero from Marshall Islands. To make it sure that uh, we'll have uh, sufficient ground na maging valid yung ating uh, pag-file ng case, pinadive natin yon ng Coast Guard uh, divers. So nakita natin doon na may scratches and uh, may, actually not only dent, but damage yung uh, part ng bulbos bow. When you bulbos bow, yung matigas na part ng vessel sa ilalim, may da damage siya. So it uh, indicates uh, that the uh, vessel was involved really in an accident. The PCG already filed the necessary complaints yesterday at Antique Prosecutor's Office against Mishai Amir, a Croatian national, the vessel's captain, second mate Anthony Bogdan, a Romanian national, and two Filipino officers. The involved foreign ship is now under PCG's custody until further order of the court. Uh, charges na ibinigay nila na sa kanila is reckless imprudence, resulting to multiple uh, homicide and serious physical injuries and uh, damage to properties. So what we're waiting, eh, yung court order na for uh, the Coast Guard to detain the vessel, it necessitates appropriate court order. The victims of the collision who survived the incident would be the witnesses of the case. Meanwhile, the Philippine Coast Guard, together with the armed forces of the Philippines, have not found the seven missing fishermen of Palawan waters after several days of search and rescue operations. Thus, the authorities decided to conclude their joint efforts. Hindi na po search and rescue operations ang meron tayo ngayon. Si nakailang araw na rin naman and we have exerted all uh, efforts necessary. So right now, nag-shift uh, na tayo from uh, search and rescue operations to search and retrieval operations. The PCG assures to continuously coordinate with the kin of the victims for possible assistance and while the case is not yet resolved. Dante Amento, UNTV, News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. And for the news abroad. Ukraine has been described as a crime scene with approximately 15,000 war crimes reported since the war began. Maybe Dog will give us the details live. Yes, Maeve, go ahead. 
Marielle, the International Criminal Court has dispatched its largest team of investigators to Ukraine to assist in investigating the suspected war crimes, including the torture and killing of civilians and the structure of civilian infrastructure. According to Ukraine's chief prosecutor Irina Venediktova, hundreds of war crimes are being added every day. Every day in Ukraine we have extra 200, 300 war crimes. For this moment we have near 15,000 cases only about war crimes. Ms. Venediktova said the list of suspects include top military, politicians and propaganda agents of Russia. But Russia has denied allegations of targeting civilians. Up to 15,000 crimes, thousands have been identified in the eastern Donbass region, where fierce fighting between Ukrainian and Russian troops are currently happening. This makes investigations more difficult, according to Ms. Venediktova. Poland and Lithuania have been assisting Ukraine, as the nations of Estonia, Latvia and Slovakia also joined the investigation efforts. Marielle? Maeve, out of the 15,000 war crimes you have mentioned, have they started to identify the war crime suspects? Yes, Marielle, Ms. Venediktova did report that more than 600 war crime suspects have been identified so far. Out of the war crime suspects, they have started prosecuting around 80. The first Russian soldier who was put on trial for killing a civilian has been sentenced to life in prison. At the latest Marielle, two Russian soldiers were already jailed in Ukraine for 11 and a half years. Back to you, Marielle. Thank you, Mavian Dog reporting live. Agatha, which hit west of Mexico as a hurricane category two, has now subsided. But its remnants is feared to spark a tropical depression to the southeastern part of Mexico during the next couple of days. The National Hurricane Center, or NHC, believes that there is a 30% chance this could develop and strike anywhere between the Yucatan and the southern tip of Florida. It could turn into a tropical cyclone, which will be named Alex, the first named storm of the 2022 Atlantic hurricane season. Chinese pharmaceutical company Sinopharm works with the University of Hong Kong to start clinical trials for an Omicron-targeted vaccine. Paul Gatalian will tell us why live. Yes, Paul? Marielle, medical researchers of Sinopharm and the University of Hong Kong are working on a new vaccine to reduce the risk of the COVID-19 Omicron variant surviving and infecting people even after they have been vaccinated. Professor Ivan Hong Fan Nai, lead researcher for the project, states that Omicron tends to escape current vaccines because the antibodies produced by the vaccines are found to gradually decrease over time. Clinical trials have started with 100 out of 500 recruits from Hong Kong who have already been given the Omicron targeting vaccine. More individuals are being urged to join the studies. The researchers aim to involve 900 healthy participants with a timetable of fully vaccinated by August, results for analysis in October, and with a goal to release the new vaccine by November. Professor Hung Fan Nai claims that they don't have an ideal number for the trial's outcome but that they believe it will have a 60 to 70% protection rate and a 90% efficacy against severe diseases from the current Omicron subvariants. Similar, similar trials have also been commenced in Hanju and Hunan in mainland China. Marielle? Thank you, Paul Gachalian reporting live. Japan's heavy machinery manufacturer develops an ocean turbine that might be the answer to green energy. Nerisa Dando will give us the details live. Yes, Nerisa, good evening. Good evening, Marielle. IHR Corporation recently completed an almost four-year demonstration study of its subsea turbine that is completely environmental friendly called Cario. 
The 330-ton prototype Cario is designed to be anchored to the seafloor at a depth of 30 to 50 meters of 100 to 160 feet. Its system collects the energy, energy in deep, deep ocean currents and turns it into a continuous and consistent source of electricity, making it a steady form of renewable energy regardless of the wind of the sun of the wind or the sun, an advantage stated by Ken Takagi. The device will be located in the Kurosho current on Japan's eastern coast and the power will be transmitted via seabed cables. Japan's New Energy and Industrial Technology Development Organization, or NEDO, estimates that the turbine has the ability to generate up to 200 gigawatts, which is close to 60% of Japan's current producing capacity. Meanwhile, the Ocean Energy System believes it is possible to generate 300 gigawatts of ocean energy globally by 2025. In addition, with the test proof to generate a stable power, plans to have a commercial operation ready by the next decade have been set. Ariel? Nerisa, would there be any challenges that Japan and the company may encounter with this project? Maria, the problem for Japan is that it has never dug for oil in the ocean before, so it lacks experience in offshore construction such as this. However, the company will use the test results to examine any impact on the marine environment and fishing industry. Back to you, Marielle. All right, thank you for that live report. Nerisa Danto reporting live from Japan. And those are the reasons behind the news in other parts of the globe. I am Maria Latoza reporting live from Perth, Australia. Good evening. Restaurant owners are urged to acquire products from local farmers amid the shortage of raw materials globally. JP Nunez explains why. The Department of Agriculture confirms that aside from the shortage of chipping potato, which is used for French fries production, wheat and corn are also among the raw materials facing shortages globally. Agriculture Assistant Secretary Noel Reyes explains some of its causes. Kung makikita niyo po yung mga reports sa global, lalo na sa Ukraine, Russia, kasi one-third ng wheat nang gagaling sa kanila. So talaga masikip na po ang supply ng wheat sa buong mundo maliban doon kulang na ang logistics sa mga barko ang ano ang nagdadala so kung may may supply man nagnaantala dahil sa kakulangan ng barko to sustain their operations restaurant owners of the Philippines or Resto PH are encouraging their members to buy locally produced materials for their food production Eric Teng, president of the Resto PH, believes that this may empower the agriculture industry and also prevent price increase of fast food chains. We need to encourage uh, our members and other restaurant operators to increase their consumption of local materials para naman po hindi ma ma affect ma ma affectuhan in a negative way ang ating uh, uh, outputs of farms and uh, our agriculture businesses. As much as possible, ayo po namin magtaas ng pressure because we don't want to drive away customers. Ayo po natin matakot ang customers from visiting the restaurants. We don't want them to think that restaurants are too expensive. Agriculture Department also encourage wheat-dependent business to use locally produced wheat. May available naman po mga local flour, ng coco flour, uh, yung sa kamote, yung lahat. Maraming klaseng uh, native na flour, rice flour, meron pa rin tayo. So again, Depende po sa uh, kung gusto ng customer eh, at gusto ng uh, no, kung sino ang pangyagariya. Pero meron po tayong coco flour, yung mga ginagawang nutriban. If the situation continues, restaurant owners are now planning to serve different menu using locally available ingredients. We were having some discussions uh, with our members and ang sabi nga nila, yung iba, kung talagang walang choice, they have to take an item out of their menu. But where they can find new things, they will introduce something new naman. Or they can serve smaller portions so that the, the price don't have to be increased. The DA previously said that there is a threat of food crisis that may be experienced in the country in the second quarter this year. Thus, it encourages citizens to practice backyard gardening which may help in the looming food crisis. JP Nunez, UNTV, News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God.
I work at Song Bahai. As the world faces these trying times amid the pandemic caused by coronavirus, we are inviting everyone to join the Global Prayer for Humanity from Monday to Friday, 9.30 p.m. Philippine time through the social media accounts of Members Church of God International. And before we close, we will leave you with a word giving glory to God from the book of Hebrews, chapter 12, verse 14. It says, Follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. And those are the reasons behind the news, June 1st, 2022. Reasons we deliver to you as they unfold. I am William Theo, and because we need to know, we will always ask why. We serve the people, we give glory to God. Thank you.